What's going on guys, this is your host AZ and today we've got an official statement from AMD regarding the PCI Express issues of the RX 480 graphics card. If you guys have been living under a rock and you don't know that what the issue was, I covered it up in my video and you can go and watch that. But summary being that the graphics card is pulling more than 75 watts of power from the PCI Express slot. Though many of the motherboards these days can easily provide more than 75 watts of power, but this is a concerning factor for the motherboards that are cheaper in the market. So to address this issue, AMD is going to be giving us a driver that's going to lower the power draw from the PCI Express slot. In the statement, AMD said that we promised an update today following concerns around the Radeon RX 480 drawing excess current from the PCI Express bus. And AMD particularly says that the driver Radeon software 16.7.1 is going to be available after 48 hours of testing. Addressing the main issue, AMD said that in this driver we've implemented a change to address power distribution on the RX 480. This change will lower current draw from the PCI Express bus. So there you have it guys, this is the actual main issue being resolved with the driver here. Furthermore, AMD said that they've included a compatibility UI toggle. What this toggle will actually do is that it will cause the card's maximum power draw to be lower, meaning that the card will draw lesser amounts of power from both the PCI Express bus and the 6-pin connector. AMD talked about a performance increase of about 3% with this new driver in the Polaris architecture and this 3% increase according to AMD is going to be the compensation for the lowering of the power draw through the compatibility UI toggle that's going to be available in the Radeon settings. But we all know that these all things, the performance improvements or the decrease in performance with the new driver is going to be tested by the reviewers when the new driver comes out. So let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. And talking about the crosses, the NVIDIA's GTX 1060 has been leaked, its photos have been leaked, its performance, the Firestrike performance mainly has been leaked and is claiming to be around about 10% to 15% faster than the RX 480. The graphics card is going to be coming out in two variants, 3GB and 6GB, with the 3GB rumored to be around $250 in price US dollars, and the 6GB model coming out at around $300 US dollars. Now ignoring Nvidia's own benchmark shots, which shouldn't be actually drawn this way. I mean, is this a 0.1% increase? Nvidia, are you insane? But getting this out of the way, the leaked benchmarks look good and they show that 0.1% difference exists between the 1060 and the RX 480. Now the one concerning factor that I am particularly concerned about right here with the 1060 is the $250 3GB model of the 1060. I have used the 3GB model card, the R9 280X for 3 years and you all would have noticed that with the 3GB of VRAM we can actually max out some of the graphical options available in the games these days. Games like Rise of the Tomb Raider consume like 6GB of VRAM on ultra textures, Shadow of Mortar is one example and this list of games is going to be increasing in the coming days with new technological advances and the new texture rendering mechanism that developers are using, we will require a graphics card that has more than 4 gigs of VRAM. And with the RX 480 being priced at $240 for the 8 gig model, I think that the consumers will continue to buy the 8 gig model of the RX 480 despite the 3 gigs model of the 1060 being in the market at $250. But we will see the true actual benchmarks after the release of the graphics card which is going to be in about a day from now on the 7th of July. But personally I don't think that a 1060 3 gigabytes model at $250 is a good choice against the RX 480 8 gigabytes at $240. 1060 3 gigabytes model would have been the more compelling option against the RX 480 if it was priced at around about 210 to 230 dollars but let's see what nvidia does to make these cards more comparable that's it for today guys leave a like on the video and leave a comment in the comment section below what do you think about these price brackets for the different gpus and yeah guys i've launched a patreon for the channel for the guys who want to support me because i don't have a gpu factory where i make these gpus so if you want to help the channel through the money you can go to patreon and donate there and i'm going to be going out now peace